And here we have Grant Sword with Bob Albertson. And uh, these two used to be in a canoe team together. And, well, it was always competition trying to outlast each other. And, uh, well, the action's going out in the course. Well, some people have taken it to extremes. That's an extreme warm-up. Yes, that was Grant earlier this morning, but now he's back in and he's, well, look at this, all the way over. Who is going to outlast who? Bob having to go for the stretch and Bob has thrown in the towel. Victory for Grant. He's delighted. Always a gentleman. He'll go and shake hands. Yes, hard lines, he's saying. Now, to the first at Castle Stewart. Robbie Gervin, straight down the middle with his drive. What can he do? Not used to being straight down the middle. And it shows. Yes, absolutely perplexed there. He had the wrong club, he had the wrong address, he had absolutely no idea what to do. Oh dear, he's back on the short stuff again. And that could prove problematic. Robbie, very used to being in the rough, but well... Uh, yes, it wasn't too far between that shot and the next. Uh, this is for a birdie. It will be a good effort. <laughs> Again on the short stuff, although he's managed to get his head around the fact he might want a more lofted club. And the ball coming in. Has he conquered the short stuff? He certainly has. What a fantastic shot. Well, there's more than one way to get your par here on the first. But a man who looks for birdies, John Sutherland, up to Nairn and the fourth. He knows every nook and cranny of this golf course, landing it miles short, up and over, getting the right bounce, getting the right run, and John Sutherland, well it's a great result, I'm not too sure if I can say it was a great shot, but certainly a great result, I think we're going to have to move back to the sixth, well it's all about accuracy, and this is nearest the pin competition, and here we have Stephen Kelly. Now he's got his eyes on the prize and the nearest the pin marker is already very close but we're going to show you a wonderful phenomenon here. Yes, if we just pause time for less than 0 0.1 seconds Stephen Kelly was in the lead for nearest the pin. <laughs> Unfortunately though the ball didn't stop there after having thread it through the marker and the flag. Stephen's ball just kept going and kept going and another very popular spot here on the Royal Donagh Golf Course. Out now to the 11th, par 3, John Atkins. Missed the green but delighted to have missed the water finding the bunker. Won't be so delighted after finding the water with his second though. Up over the back and well that will be an impressive par from the beach. And yes John perhaps you should have had those practice swings before you tried to hit the ball. Oh dear. Well, never mind. We can move back to Royal Donagh now in the 8th. And David Whitehead. I wonder how he got that name. That's a coincidence. Anyway. He's uh, chopped it short and rolling on and rolling on. I'll tell you what, there were some good shots over the three days on the golf courses. But up it comes, up it comes. Hits the hole and just runs past. A wonderful effort there from David Whitehead. Uh, like I say, there was some good golf, not something we're used to at this tournament, but one of the professionals, Graham Fox, one of the leading professionals here in Scotland. Up it comes, up it comes for a hole-in-one at the sixth at Nairn. Oh, so close. And I can't tell you the relief that Graham Fox had that that didn't drop, at the thought of having to buy everybody a drink. Well, you think those two shots were close. Graham Fox nearly with a hole-in-one. And you think Richard Walters can't do any better than that at the 10th here at Royal Dornoch. And I tell you what, you'd be absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Walters. Well, we went from good to brilliant to, well, probably best not to comment on it. Down onto the 11th, Ross Graham and playing partners trying their best to put him off, making noises laughing, pointing, and it just, well, it's delaying, quite frankly, it's delaying the inevitable low, because from this distance, Ross Graham never misses, in it goes, fantastic, punching the air, that is a magnificent seven, <laughs> yes, no wonder he's delighted, and off they go, it's Jamie Devonald, has he learned to control his power, uh, it doesn't sound like it, uh, <laughs> cameramen jumping out the way, and uh, four shots, 411 yards played on a short par three. Oh dear, there was some shrapnel from that shot and it's carried all the way up to the 16th. And Mark Andres has been hit. He's down, he's in agony and his playing partners are utterly unconcerned as Brian Maxwell pulls out the crisps. 
And uh, sure, yes, Chris Lloyd, you'll have some of that. Playing partner, dying in the background, but just as long as you get a couple of frazzles down your neck. <laughs> 